Welcome to another episode of Grub Masters. I'm John and today it's Drunken Pork Chops. We're going to be doing another dog or Dutch oven gathering in a couple weeks at a local brewery in Glastonbury, Connecticut. And I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, we've done the Guinness stew and a, a nice porter or stout based stew is really good. Um, I, I mean, I love that but I'm afraid that there's gonna be a lot of other people with that same idea. So I tried to think outside the box a little bit and I came up with these drunken pork chops and I wanted to share that with you today. I went to my local meat center and I've got these beautiful um, bone-in pork chops. I had them cut an inch and a half thick. So these are nice and thick and I like them from the loin end of the um, whole loin um, rather than the rib end because I love that tenderloin that's at the bottom and I got the bone in too to give us a little bit more flavor. Um, so those are gonna be amazing. I got six of those. I really hope they're gonna fit in a 12 inch Dutch oven. I might be uh, crowding it a little bit. Um, I've got two uh, sweet onions that I just did up into rounds. I'm gonna put those in there for flavor. I've got six um, cloves of garlic. I figure a clove of garlic per pork chop, I don't know. Um, I've got two uh, Oktoberfest beers here. Um, Sam Adams Oktoberfest, I love this stuff. And I'm gonna use one and a half, uh, just because I wanna drink half a beer. Um, I've got a half a cup of brown sugar, that's dark brown sugar. I'm gonna use about a cup of ketchup, and I've got a little salt and pepper that I'm gonna to season to taste. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get our coals going. I'm gonna get a nice bed of coals on the bottom of that Dutch oven, and I'm gonna sear these babies off in a little olive oil. The coals are rocket hot, as I like to say. Flames coming off the top of the chimney, so they're ready to go. I'm gonna lay down a layer of them underneath the Dutch oven so I can brown these uh, pork chops off. All right, and we're just gonna set a little olive oil in there. A couple tablespoons, maybe. Just enough to kind of coat the bottom of that pan. And we'll let that get up to town. All right, our oil's nice and hot. Let's get these chops in there. We're gonna have to do these about three at a time. All right, it's been about five minutes time for a flip. And that's what we're looking for. The golden brown crust. We'll let these go for about four to five more minutes. Spend five minutes, it's time to swap these out with the other ones. Um, I'm gonna have to make a little room on my cutting board. And yeah, I got some nice brown color on there. Seared them up a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Let me just help them along. All right, five minutes aside for these guys too. Um, in the meantime, I've replenished my coals because as soon as these are done searing, it's gonna be time to build our sauce and get them back in there so they can stew for a while. Second set of chops are done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove them from here and I'm gonna start to build the sauce. Those 
are looking great. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down all my onions. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help keep any uh, of the pork chops from burning because I'll have that little layer and it'll help break these down. Nice, nice. Think of it as like little onion trivets. That's all set. Um, let's see here. Get the garlic in, get that smashed up. I'm just gonna take my knife, smash it down. And that goes. Beautiful. All right. Now, let's get some beer in there. Got to use your Millennium Falcon opener, of course. All right, whole bottle of Sam Adams. Oktoberfest is in. do is we'll sprinkle in our brown sugar. And now I'm going to do a cup. I think a cup. There's something just so satisfying about squeezing this. All right, so for measurement purposes, that's a cup. I'm just gonna mix this around a little bit. All right now I'm gonna take my pork chops and I'm gonna layer them in there the best I can. Throw a little salt. And some pepper. Another half a beer. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna lid this up, I'm gonna throw some coals, do our ring method, let this go until they're nice and tender. I'll probe them and uh, I'll get back to you when they're just right. Cheers. It's been just about an hour, let's take a look. I've been smelling these for a while now. Checked on them about halfway through, um, gave it a little stir, and now let's probe them. Yeah, they're hitting about 187, 190. So I think it's time to pull one off and give it a taste. Oh man, that is a thing of beauty right there. It's just, I can't wait. All right, let's dig into it. I'm gonna take a bite right from that tenderloin. That's the piece I love the most. It's so tender, it's just falling apart. Like literally the fork pulled it apart before the knife could even do much. Um, anyway, down the hatch. Mm. So good, the beer did its job. That is so tender. It's literally fork tender. It's got a nice tomato-based flavor, and the onions are definitely shining through that garlic. Really good. Uh, I think I might throw a little bit of pepper on this when I bring it inside. Um, to, I got some people over to enjoy these. Um, little pepper outside that, I think it's just phenomenal. Um, I hope you like what you saw here. If you do, give us a like, a thumbs up, a share, and most importantly, get out there and cook.